Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to be trying out this very fun looking Peter Pan's Neverland puzzle. So this puzzle was very kindly sent to me by the company Great Games. They specialize in both board games and puzzles and happen to be based here in Australia. And from what I understand, the artist behind these this fabulous artwork and also the artwork on the other puzzles and board games, Samuel Milham, is also the owner of Great Games. So this particular puzzle uh, is part of the Visuals or Visual Puzzles series. It's number three in the series. Um, so like it suggests, there were a couple more before this one. Um, and this one's 1,000 pieces and uh, the artwork is very fun and cartoony, um, jam-packed full of lots of details and interesting people and critters, uh, lots of things associated with Peter Pan and Neverland, of course. Um, and so the idea behind these Visuals puzzles is that not only do you get a very fun, jam-packed, detailed artwork to, you know, uh, sort of discover as you piece the puzzle together, but you also get an envelope in here which has lots of riddles for you to solve once you've completed the puzzle. And then I believe there's also, uh, I think, like the answers to the riddles give you like items or people or things to find within the puzzle. So it's sort of like a search and find as well. So yeah, that sounds really fun. I've never really done anything like that before. So definitely looking forward to trying this one out. And then funnily enough, um, before being contacted about being sent this puzzle, I actually had already backed their most recent Kickstarter. So that one's finished now and the puzzle's now being manufactured. That was for the Alice in Wonderland Kickstarter. And like I said, I've never tried any of these puzzles before. So I kind of just backed that one on a whim, but also cause like a friend of mine said they had really enjoyed the Vizzles puzzles and really liked the artwork. And yeah, I thought the Alice artwork looked really cool and just as fun as this one and very colorful and interesting as well. And I like, Alice in Wonderland themed things. So yeah, definitely excited for that one to arrive. And then in other exciting news to do with Kickstarters, uh, they actually just announced the next Kickstarter, which is coming out very soon on the 9th of May, they're gonna be launching the Wizard of Oz Kickstarter uh, for the Vizzles puzzle. So that looks really fun. Uh, you can actually see some sneak peeks of that on the artist, uh, Sammy Milham's Instagram. So I'll actually link everything, the uh, the Great Games website where you can actually purchase some of these previous Vizzles puzzles, the uh, artist's Instagram and the information for the next Kickstarter in the description box below. Um, so I think that's enough rambling for now. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the packaging and the pieces. Let's take a look at the outside of the box and then of course we'll open it up and see what's included on the inside. So the front and I guess, yeah, the sides, I think all sides as well has a section of the artwork. It looks very fun and colorful. And then we've got here in the middle, Peter Pan's Neverland. And actually this text, and I think, yep, the top and the bottom here, uh, it's like a smooth coating. I think it's called like a UV spot. So it's a bit like sort of glossy and smooth. Yeah, it looks, looks and feels really nice. And then up here we've got Vizzles, Visual Puzzles Series 3. And then here we've got 1000 piece jigsaw puzzles, uh, 60 by 50 centimeters. I'll put the inches on the screen as well. And then let's check out this side. So uh, it also has Fizzles, Visual Puzzles, Series 3, uh, Jigsaw Puzzles with a Twist. Finish your puzzle, then solve the riddles inside a secret envelope to begin your search and find adventure. So that sounds fun. And then on this side, we've got Fizzles, uh, Visual Puzzles, Series 3, and then it just has the Peter Pan's Neverland logo here. And then, oh, yep, the same information is just repeated on this side. And then uh, this is the same as the first side we looked at as well. So let's take a look at the back. So we've got the background is sort of like a nice kind of teal aqua color. Um, I think it's sort of got like a bit of a, the artwork kind of faded into it. it, looks cool. But we've got quite a bit of information here. We've got, again, the sort of Vizzles logo, Series 3, and the Peter Pan Neverland logo. And then it's got a little picture of part of the puzzle here. It says, finish your puzzle, like number one, finish your puzzle. And then here we've got an envelope and it says, open, number two, open your envelope and find all the riddles. And then number three, solve the riddles and locate the answers on the artwork. So yeah, that sounds fun. And then he here it says, thank you for backing us on Kickstarter. Um, and then, yeah, because this puzzle was originally a Kickstarter project. And here it says 1000 piece puzzle, a search and find jigsaw puzzle adventure where finishing is just the beginning. And then it has great games and their like contact info. Then it has Samuel Milham illustration, um, illustrated by Samuel Milham. 
and his website. Then we've got like some little warning logos here and made in China. Again, it has the size and we've got a barcode. So let's open this up. Also, this is quite a nice, like sturdy, very, uh, yeah, nice quality filling box. Looks really good, feels nice. Ooh, can we get it open though? That is the question. Yes, we can. Okay. So we've got here, uh, okay, so this is interesting. It looks like we've got the finished or the whole artwork printed on the inside of the lid. So yeah, I don't know if that means we've got a poster or not. I'll find out. Uh, but yeah, it looks yeah, very cute and fun. So let's pop that over there. And then here, this looks like, okay, this must be our envelope with the riddles. So again, it just sort of has the same logos and says, open me when completed. And yeah, so I will do as it says. I will not open it till I've finished the puzzle. And then we've got what looks like our bag of pieces. So that just comes in a um, non-resealable plastic bag. Um, the pieces look kind of, they definitely look interesting, uh, which we'll, we'll take a close look at these in a minute. And then, okay, so yeah, we don't have a poster here. We just have, again, the same finished um, puzzle image printed on the bottom, like inside of the bottom of the box. Um, oh, and it says, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it says, uh, Vizzle's image guide with the arrow. And does that say, oh yeah, it says it on the top part as well. Um, so that's interesting. We don't actually have a poster, so which would have been nice. I think that's like so far my only con is that like we don't have a poster. So I guess that means if you want to look at the reference picture, you kind of have to put the puzzle pieces in just one side of the box. Um, I pr probably would have preferred to put them in both, but I mean, I've got other spare like puzzle box lids I can use or whatever, but also um, at a glance, these puzzle pieces look a little bit smaller in size, which is interesting. I mean, it, I'm getting sidetracked here, but um, going back to, where was it? Here, the box lid has a size 60 by 50 centimeters. That is actually a little bit smaller than your sort of average 1000 piece. Normally a 1000 piece would be 70 by 50. So yeah, so that's kind of interesting. So that means maybe that our puzzle pieces won't need as much room for sorting is what I'm getting at. Uh, that was a bit long winded, wasn't it? Anyway, um, speaking of puzzle pieces, let's open this up and take a look. Okay, I've poured out all the pieces. Um, so yeah, let's, oh, okay. Yeah, they definitely are quite different to any puzzle that I've sort of done recently. They're like definitely a lot smaller in size than your sort of average 1000 piece. So yeah, definitely smaller than like a Ravensburger or I don't know what else, like, a, yeah, definitely smaller than like a Gallison or something. So yeah, they kind of feel a little bit teeny tiny, very, very cute actually. Um, so at a glance, I guess, let me just pick a random piece. Um, I guess we'll, we'll hold it up here. Hopefully you can see we've got a white paper backing. Um, I, usually not my favorite, but so far looking at them, they seem, I haven't seen any like damaged ones. Um, so we'll see how that goes, whether the white paper is going to be problematic or not. But so far, everything looks okay. And then as for thickness, um, these are actually kind of more on the thin side. Like, you know, they feel fairly thin. But that being said, they don't feel flimsy. They actually feel quite, I mean, I could bend it if I tried, but it feels pretty sturdy, actually. So, yeah. Um, so that's good. And then um, the top is sort of an interesting, fairly matte surface. It actually has a slight, very subtle texture like a little bit of like a matte linen sort of texture. There's a slight amount of sheen, but it's not like deliberately glossy or anything. It's just sort of, uh, yeah, a teeny weeny bit of sheen that you'd sort of get with most, I guess, puzzle pieces. But yeah, so not 100, 100% matte, but fairly matte. But yeah, it feels, uh, yeah, it feels quite nice. So yeah, pretty, feels fairly smooth. You can, I guess, yeah, I guess you can't feel the texture too much. It's more something you can see rather than feel. But yeah, they, yeah, it looks interesting. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how well these are going to hold together or not. Um, but they are definitely very cute. Like they're so teeny tiny. I guess I'll just show you some because like, I just think they look, they're like, yeah, just quite cute in size. So yeah, I think cute, but they definitely feel very lightweight because they're not very thick at all. 
Um, and yeah, and then in, in terms of the piece shapes, it does look like, as you just saw, we do have quite a variety of piece shapes. So we've got the two tab ones, and let's see what else we've got. Oh, there's like a three tab. I'm just doing it with the white side up so it's a bit easier to see against my hand. Uh, what else? We've got three tabs, yes. Oh, hang on, a zero tab one. Do we have one with four? Maybe. Well, it's a few pieces like sort of still stuck together, but I think they're cut all the way through. Uh, yes, they are. They just haven't separated properly. Uh, I'll get to that later. That's too hard to do with one hand. Um, I don't know if there's one with four tabs. We may not have that piece shape, but that's okay. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if we have one with four tabs, but at the very least we have quite a variety already. So we've got zero tabs, one tab, a couple of two tab variations and three tabs. So yeah, and plus of course all your edge pieces as well. So hopefully that means we won't have too many false fits. That noise is my cat Misty in a box um, telling me she's sick of my puzzling and I should pat and play with her instead. Fair point, I guess. Um, but yeah, so we've got a fair bit of variation. So yeah, hopefully not too many false fits. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how well these hold together and yeah, and if we do have false fits. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the pieces. Um, my hands feel a little bit dusty, but I didn't see too much. There doesn't seem to be any chunky puzzle dust that I've noticed. Like, so maybe it's just a bit of fine dust. Like the bag itself doesn't look too dusty after pouring these out. And I can't really see, there's no like chunky bits like you get in a Ravensburger, nothing like that. So just maybe a bit of fine dust. And then in a sec, I'm gonna put this together, which I'm really excited to do because this looks super fun. So if I bring back, the uh, image in the top part of the box. Um, there's like a lot going on. This is one of these very like detail packed kind of puzzles. So, I mean, there are little bits of distinct sections, but not any like big sort of solid chunky bits of color or pattern. There's just so much going on. Um, and that's an airplane if you can hear that. I feel like everything's happening today. <laughs> So I guess in terms of like, put, oop, in terms of putting this puzzle together, I may try and pull out all the edge pieces because there's so much like different stuff going on that should be pretty easy to put the border together. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else I'll pull out. Like, I mean, I guess I think it's gonna be one of these puzzles where I'll see a piece and then try and match it up to where it goes on the picture and then sort of put it roughly in that spot. And then hopefully sections will start coming together a bit more. I mean, I might be able to pull out some bits like, you know, maybe these rainbows, um, maybe some of the water or these little like tents or the pirate ship. Like I can probably find those or the sort of water up here. But yeah, I guess we'll just see. Um, yeah, because you can't really just pull out grass because there's sort of grass everywhere. And even the water, there's quite a lot. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just sort of play it by ear and see how things go. Uh, but either way, I think it's guaranteed to be pretty fun. There's a lot going on and I'm looking forward to sort of uh, discovering all these details and I can already see lots of fun things going on, but I'm sure there's heaps more that I have yet to discover. So um, I think I've said all I have to say about the, bo the box and the pieces and everything. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into some puzzling.
I'm back and I'm probably a bit over halfway through the puzzle and I've really been having a lot of fun. It's just so colorful and I, yeah, I really love all the illustrations and just really cute, quirky characters. I love this sea monster octopus creature here with its single eye and these like very mischievous, uh, cheeky looking starfish. And this very relaxed, I guess, crocodile octopus. And we've got cute little fairies, dragons, lots of flamingos. Uh, we've got a random telephone here. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, lots of angry pirates as well. They've all, well, they're hanging out all over. We've got a whole bunch in this boat over here. And we've got like lots of little fairies and cute little monsters, a pig playing a chess. And I really love the rainbow cloud critters. I think they're just really fun and just very cheerful and cute. And I really love this little monster up here with the big eyes. So yeah, very cute. Um, that all being said though, it has taken a while to get to this point in the puzzle. It's taken pretty much four hours. Um, I'm not too surprised though, like uh, once I did the border, that wasn't too bad. I then sort of, um, I had sorted like these bluey teal pieces of the water together. Um, and I did that next. And then after that, it was pretty hard to sort. Like I could sort of pick out pirates and bits of brown of the tent and yellow of the campfire and maybe some pinks and things like that. But because there's just so much going on and so much detail, it was pretty tricky to sort. So it was kind of more of a case of like, you know, just picking up a piece from the box or from a pile and then, you know, looking at it and comparing it to the, finding out where it was on the reference picture. So that's definitely slow going. So yeah, it took, yeah, did I say four hours? So yeah, quite a bit of time. I don't know how long the rest of this is gonna take. Like I have done like more than half I would say, and I'm a bit more familiar with the image now, so I feel like I kind of know where things go a bit more. But that being said, I do have a lot of like green, as you can see, greens and browns in this box. So yeah, uh, that could still be fairly tricky, I imagine. Um, yeah, but I think that's all I have to say about, I guess the image and like progress and that sort of thing. Um, so let's talk about the quality. So for the most part, the pieces are pretty uh, like matte and smooth, but there is a bit of glare here, although I'm at a bit of a different angle. Like I think normally when I'm puzzling, I'd be a bit more like leaning over like this. So there isn't too much glare. Uh, I don't really recall having to deal with too much glare while puzzling. So I've been pretty happy with it, but of course everyone's lighting is different. Um, and the pieces are sort of thin as we talked about, but that hasn't really been an issue for me. I guess the main thing, is that the piece fit is quite like more on the loose crumbly side. Um, so you definitely couldn't do a puzzle pickup. So let's see, we've got like this section here. Like, yeah, as you can see, it kind of crumbles pretty easily. Oop, there we go, I'm making a mess. And um, my cat Misty has really been liking this puzzle and has been sitting on it a lot, much to my annoyance. Um, not only leaving cat hair, but managing, because of the, the piece fits quite loose, managing to uh, cause a bit of puzzle chaos with every time she pays it a visit and messes up sections. So that's been a little bit annoying, um, but that's more misty, not the puzzle. But yes, just a warning, maybe don't let your cat sit on this puzzle because they might uh, mess it up. Um, anyway, so yeah, apart from that, uh, everything's been pretty good. And the actual like uniqueness of the piece fit has been very good. I think I've only had like one or two false fits, if that, apart from that, everything sort of fit where it, fit where it's supposed to go. So very happy with that. And there hasn't really been like any puzzle dust, so it's very minimal. And then as for like damaged pieces, I don't think, I don't recall seeing any. So I think, yeah, I've been very happy with the quality. It's like the condition of the pieces is very good. Yeah, really excellent quality. So yeah, really happy. Um, so I think that's all I have to say at the moment. Um, if I think of anything else as I uh, finish the puzzle, I'll definitely uh, mention it at the end of the video where I'll sort of give you a bit of a, more of a summary of my experience as a whole. Um, but apart from that, I'm yeah, excited to get back into this and yeah, itching to get going. So I guess I'll see you once the puzzle's done.
I'm back and I finished a Neverland puzzle and I really had a lot of fun piecing this one together. There's just so many uh, cute quirky characters to discover and yeah it was just fun piecing this together and finding more and more funny things and I really love the bright colors and there's some really cute characters as well so yeah I really loved it. Uh, sadly though I am missing a piece over here so I don't know if the puzzle was always missing a piece. I mean, also these things happen, like I've definitely had brand new puzzles before where they're missing a piece or have like duplicate pieces or just weird things like that. It happens. Um, but I also have my suspicions that my cat Misty may know something about this because I did catch her sitting on this puzzle a couple of times and she did seem very interested in it. So if it turns up, I will let you know in the comments below, I guess. Um, so missing piece aside, let's sort of touch on the quality again. So yeah, overall I really enjoyed it and had a good experience with the quality. The pieces are a bit more on the thin side. Um, that being said though, they still feel like, I mean, they're easy to pick up and they still feel pretty sturdy and strong. They don't feel too flimsy or anything like that. So I don't think you'd really have an issue with them. Um, and the fit uh, when you're doing like small sections, it is more on the loose crumbly side. So I wasn't really able to pick up sections and move them around very easily. I, you kind of had to build things where you wanted them or be a bit more strategic where you're building things so you could move them to where you want. Um, but funnily enough, I kind of discovered that as like once the puzzle's completed, it does kind of hold together pretty well. So who knows, maybe it would actually pass the puzzle pickup challenge. Uh, I'm not going to be brave enough to find out, but feel free to if you want to. Um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. And then speaking of piece fit, uh, when it comes to like the uniqueness of the piece fit, it was very good. I think I only had like maybe one or two false fits if that. Um, but yeah, otherwise like everything sort of fit where it was supposed to go. Uh, yeah, weren't it, there weren't really any more false fits than yeah, the couple I said. And I mean, obviously having a very like detailed busy design helps with that as well. But yeah, I thought the, yeah, the cut, the uniqueness of the piece shapes is yeah, really good. Um, and then the surface of the pieces is nice and smooth. Um, there's, it's m fairly matte for the most part, although I have a bit of a glare patch here from uh, like the ring light and the overhead light, but you know, it's just gonna be dependent on everyone's lighting, you know, and, and what their house is like. So yeah, but for the most part, it's fairly matte. Um, I didn't, like there was, a, there was a tiny bit of glare when I was puzzling, but not enough to like, really cause any issues and didn't really bother me. So yeah, I was fine with that. And then uh, what else? Uh, puzzle dust is pretty much non-existent. I think it was just really minor. So yeah, that didn't bother me. And um, yeah, and even though there's a white paper backing, which is like not my favorite, uh, it was all in really great condition. Everything was very pristine and yeah, no damaged pieces. So yeah, really happy. Um, the only other thing I can think of that I guess I wish was uh, that they maybe would add in in future like a visuals puzzles would be to add in a poster So I know there's like a reference picture on the top and bottom of the like inside of the box um, But for me personally, I kind of like to use those to put all the pieces in um, and spread them out over the two like box lids um, in which case you can't really see the picture um, So it would have been good to have like an extra reference picture or poster and actually the other thing I realized I just thought of is that it was a little bit tricky sometimes um, like especially when I got down to like maybe only one or two layers of puzzle pieces left in the bottom of the box because it had the picture underneath sometimes it was a little hard to see the pieces themselves so it would have actually maybe been better that the bottom of the box was like like the inside of the box was just a plain color so it was like would be easier to see all the detail on the pieces instead of like getting them mixed up with the picture underneath. I hope I'm making sense here. Um, but it wasn't like a big, big problem. It was just kind of an interesting issue I wasn't really expecting to come across, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it with the quality. Like I said, overall, really enjoyed it and had a great experience. So since completing the puzzle, I was uh, able to open up this secret envelope here, which had a couple of sheets in. Um, so I'll show you one and just tell you about the other one. So the first sheet is actually a double-sided page of riddles. So you've got 30 riddles, 15 on each side. Um, and yeah, they were quite fun. Um, there were some that were pretty easy to answer, at least for me, and then others that I found were a bit more tricky and you, had to, you sort of had to think outside the box a bit, a bit more abstract thinking maybe. And there were even a couple I couldn't answer, so they were a bit tricky. Um, but that's okay because once you've uh, had a go at answering them, you can 
well, you can write your answer underneath each riddle, but then you can check them on the answer sheet that's included in here as well. So I'm not going to show you that, but yeah, it's kind of, it's good that they include that as well. Um, and then once you've found all the answers, you can then try and find those objects or things within the puzzle. So they're all hidden in here somewhere. So yeah, it's a bit, it turns into a find and search once you've done the riddles. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And I really think it's kind of like a fun activity that you could do on your own, but also with other people, especially kids or other family members or friends, whatever you like. And funnily enough, um, my husband, who actually really doesn't like puzzling at all, um, he really got into helping me solve the riddles and then finding the objects in the puzzle. So there you go, something for everyone, I guess. Um, so yeah, really impressed with the puzzle and the artwork and the quality. And then I really enjoyed this sort of bonus kind of level of fun activity as well, like riddles and then sort of a finer search. I just thought it was a really nice touch and it was fun that, you know, I could keep enjoying the puzzling experience even once the puzzle was finished. So yeah, overall, uh, really enjoyed it and definitely recommend it. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of the Peter Pan's Neverland puzzle. Do you like the artwork and do you like the idea of being able to do extra activities once you've completed your puzzle? And if you're interested in getting your own copy of this puzzle, it is available on their website. And don't forget about the upcoming Wizard of Oz Kickstarter, which will be launching May the 9th. Uh, I'll leave details for both of those in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this, and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.